So everyone, today we've got a fantastic case study for you of a patient with neck pain who seems to have developed neurological symptoms running down into their arm and into their hand. This is a really great case study to go through the assessment process for how we came up with a diagnosis. If you're ready, let's dive in. So everyone, we're delighted to be able to bring you this case study of a patient with neck pain today. And we'd love to talk you through the clinical reasoning process behind the assessment and the diagnosis for this patient so that if you have a similar patient in your practice, you'll be confident with how you can assess them too. So let's look at our patient. We have a 52 year old female patient who presents with a two week onset of right sided neck pain and right sided arm pain. As you can see, it appears that this patient has pain that runs down from the right side of their neck through down the shoulder and down into the arm, the lateral arm through the humerus, down through the lateral forearm, the radius, and into their thumb. They describe their pain as a sharp and shooting pain, which is actually quite common when you have patients who have developed these neurological or these neurogenic based pain symptoms. So they describe that there hasn't been any particular trauma that has brought on their symptoms. It's been that there's this gradual onset of symptoms across the last two weeks. They also report they've been experiencing some tingling and some numbness here in the lateral forearm and in their thumb of this right arm. They normally work as a teacher and they are currently off work due to their pain and they haven't been able to engage in their recent hobbies and activities, which is playing netball and going to the gym. So let's flick on over to the objective assessment, the examination for this patient. So this patient appears to walk in unaided. They don't seem to have any clear deformities on observation of their cervical spine. However, when we start palpating the lower cervical spine, perhaps with the patient in prone, you find that it is certainly tender in that area. We look at their active range of movement and it looks like they have reasonable movement of the shoulders on both the right and left sides. That's what F-R-O-M-N-A-D stands for, full range of movement, nothing abnormal detected. We look at their neck range of movement and what we can see is that they have reasonable movement in all directions. So cervical spine flexion, extension, rotation. However, it's clear that when they flex their cervical spine and rotate to the right, we can see that it actually reproduces their arm symptoms. It brings on that pain in their right arm running down to the right thumb. We look at their dermatomal testing, really important for looking at sensation, and we find that they have numbness in the C6 distribution. So if you're looking for where that is, that's going to be running from the proximal radius on the lateral forearm running down and into the distal thumb. Otherwise, sensation appears good throughout the right and left arm elsewhere. We look at their myotomal testing, so their power, which appears absolutely fine with 5 out of 5 on the Oxford scale from C4 to T1, both right and left. And when we look at their reflexes for the biceps, the triceps and the brachioradialis on their right and left side, everything seems fine there too. We then do some special tests, which seem to be really indicative of what this patient had. We completed a Sperling's test, which was positive, and a distraction test, which eased the patient's symptoms. If you're not familiar with what those tests are, don't worry, we'll run through them in the next section. So at this point, what do you think was going on with this patient? What do you think their diagnosis was? So in the outcome of this patient's diagnosis, it was evident that they were experiencing a painful C6 radiculopathy. A radiculopathy is a nerve root compression that is causing either myotomal changes, dermatomal changes, or reflex changes. And we can see from the sensory dermatomal changes from this patient that they were experiencing a C6 radiculopathy. So now let's dive into the clinical reasoning. Why did we come up with this diagnosis? Well, I think it's really important to say that when patients present with pain running down through the arm, particularly runs down past the elbow, the most common suspicion is that there is a nerve or a neurogenic cause for their symptoms. Now, coupled with the fact that, as you can see at the bottom, the patient reported this sharp and shooting pain, we know that that is very consistent with nerve-based symptoms. 
And also the fact that they had this tingling going down in the arm as well, which once again suggests some kind of sensory problem or sensory dysfunction with those nerves. So then once we've kind of established, right, it certainly is neurogenic, the next question is, is it the cervical spine which is causing those symptoms? And that was clearly evident with this patient because of the fact that the neck range of movement testing aggravated their symptoms. But also they had a positive Sperling's and a positive cervical spine distraction test. So let's talk through these. So both of these factors are consistent as a part of Venus cluster, which is a group of different tests that we can use to identify a cervical spine radiculopathy. So Sperling's test is where we ask the patient to be in a seated position. The examiner then extends their cervical spine before rotating and side flexing towards the painful side and then applying a downward or axial load through the neck. If it reproduces the patient's symptoms, it's a positive sign. And this is often very consistent with a cervical spine, nerve root compression or a radiculopathy. Then we had the positive cervical distraction test. This is where we lie our patient in supine and Effectively, as the examiner, what we're doing is we are providing a distraction force to their neck. We're gently pulling back on their head so that it opens up those cervical spine vertebrae or facet joints. And if it eases the symptoms, it suggests that by applying that slight decompressive force, decompressing the nerve root and easing the symptoms, once again, it suggests that the patient probably does have a radiculopathy. And then finally, the fact that this patient had the pins and needles numbness, the dermatomal changes in the very specific C6 distribution. So from the lateral radius running down into the thumb, which allowed us to, I suppose, identify the spinal level that this radiculopathy was likely to be at. And that completes this case study. I really hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. And if you want more case studies like this, please comment more in the comments below. Of course, if you want more resources from us, you can check out our Instagram channel at Clinical Physio and our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.